I just came across today um, a tweet by Coin Telegraph, the uh, one of the formal sources for uh, Bitcoin news and updates or any any cryptocurrencies. And this guy named Nasim Taleb said uh, in an article in, in an interview for him that almost all Bitcoiners are idiots. Well, I did a little research on who this Nasim Taleb guy is. He's just when he calls himself, when he calls himself, all right, himself, a risk engineering professor. Sounds like an economist to me, right? Like I said in my previous entry, never take an economist's word for it. Never trust an economist's opinion. Nasim, Nasim Taleb is an example, all right? Do not trust any of those economists' opinions unless their foot is already in the door when it comes to investing or business. Right? But 90-95% of them, they don't have their foot on, on in the door. They will never have their foot in the door. Because they they are they are they are already addicted looking from the outside and giving their conclusions on how um, how an investment is going to go how the economy is going to on where an economy is going to go that's why I don't take their bullshit <laughs> if you're an established entre entrepreneur or an investor and you tell me that all bitcoiners are nearly all bitcoiners are idiots I'll probably take your word for it. I'll believe you. But if you're just a plain old economist, your opinion is bullshit to me. It's garbage. I suddenly went back to memory lane mentally to the time uh, my father was president of the PTA and I was student council president. This was during my elementary during my uh, elementary days. Philippines. Oh. Philippines was amazing. I mean, come on. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> also watching YouTube videos right now. Now, anyway, he called right after winning the election for PTA president. My dad called for a meeting the next day. So the venue is here, our house. So he had uh, every winning officer uh, required them to attend the next day for their first meeting. I thought, Dad, you just won the election and now you're calling for a meeting. He said, So what? I want to get, I want to get down. He said, I want to get down to business. In Filipino, okay. I want to get down to business right away. <clears throat> now. So we were waiting for everybody to uh, bring, waiting everybody to come in. Two hours have passed. Well, no one came. No one came. So my dad asked me to get a get a piece of bond paper and get a get a pen. And uh, I asked why. I'm going to resign. That's that was his answer. So. I, so I had no objection, so I quickly got the pen and paper and gave it to him. And right there and then, on the dining table, he wrote his resignation letter. Then he instructed me to give it to to my print to, to to our principal, to the principal of the elementary, my principal, the next day. So right after, so the next day, <clears throat> right after flag right after our flag ceremony, I went to her office and gave the resignation letter. She was shocked. Okay. There was a, uh, she had that dumbfounded look on her face and she asked me, Jason, why is your dad resigning? In Filipino, of course. And well, I, I told her the truth. No one attended the meeting. <laughs> and she um, told me, well, okay, okay. You got, you got class, go, 
in car class go so she uh, she well she had to go to class now and she read the letter of course she read the letter <clears throat> this was one of the um, one of the most important lessons I learned from my dad okay on how to be how to be a man of your word okay if you think your word is as good as gold, you have to fulfill your verbal your you have to fulfill verbal agreements every time. Okay? You have to keep your word in uh, in easy terms. You have to keep your word all the time. If you think your your word your word is as good as gold. Now, in the case of those who well, of every single one of those officers who did not attend. I don't know what I don't know what their worth is now. I don't know how much their how much their word is now. But it gave me an important lesson. If well, if you can't keep your word, then you're garbage. This was the most important lesson I learned from my dad on how to be a man of your word. <clears throat> if you can't keep your word, Don't open your mouth. Because if you open your mouth and you don't keep your word, you're garbage. Okay? You're garbage. This is the lesson I still hold today. Okay? How old was I at that time? 11? I'm 47 now. So I don't know, I still hold that lesson. I still, um, I still hold that lesson to heart. Okay? For me, it was the most important lesson I learned from my dad on how to be a man of your word. So for me now, there are two scales to, to which your word has value. It's either gold or garbage. If you're into the habit of not keeping your word, the moment you open your mouth, you're garbage already. I can treat you as garbage. But, if you value the words you utter, okay, if you keep your word, if you're, if you have that habit of keeping your word ev each and every time, well, for me, it's not just, it's not just as good as gold. It's, it's more valuable than gold. I can get into a verbal or a handshake agreement with you. We don't need contracts. We don't need contracts. Just keep your word and I'll keep mine. That's the old-fashioned way of doing business and it's the it's the uh, it's the most effective way of doing business. Okay, kung verbal or handshake agreement kayo. Okay? That's the ultimate gentleman's agreement. These days I don't know if the current generation knows what a handshake is. Right? If you're... Again. If you're into the habit of not keeping your word, you're garbage. But if keeping your word is a... Uh, if you treat keeping your word as a million dollar habit, it's worth more than gold. Right? So there are two scales your word can go to. It's either garbage or gold. <clears throat> it's now around 5.30 in the morning and I um, just wanted to make uh, this video since yesterday but I want to make it for Instagram now. Sometimes you gotta distract yourself in order to um, in order to keep yourself grinding. All right. I don't know. It's and it's worked for me over the years, uh, even during even during my school days. Okay. I think high school. Yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes I just have to distract myself just to uh, just 
just to get the focus back just to get um, just to get the uh, just to get the productivity back the uh, I would love to call the malicious intent not not the not the proverbial okay the malicious intent to uh, to keep pushing on what I what I plan to do it has worked uh, last night because I was already uh, doing a blog post but I seem just couldn't seem to just couldn't seem to uh, <clears throat> get the creative juices flowing so I had to well, I had to do two things for a while I had to distract myself two ways uh, I had to listen to music and uh, play a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh on, on my laptop Edo Pro so I did those two things and well As expected, the the uh, the ideas the ideas for that blog post came back, so I went back to went back to the blog post to to type it away to, to type it there, and yeah, that always hasn't failed me. Self distraction, okay, not self destruction. <laughs> self distraction sometimes you uh, you really have to distract yourself to uh, to keep yourself grinding to keep yourself creative for me all right for me self distraction works like a charm i just uh um uh, I've been I've been going over my social media planning for uh, for almost 24 hours now and I finally decided well not to promote old content and well I have a lot of affiliate links that need to be promoted so the month of July well will will all will, will be an all affiliate links uh, Will all will be all about affiliate links. Okay. So the best avenue for this is Twitter. So I set up a Twitter campaign for my uh, for my affiliate links in such a way, all right, in such a way that it is not spammy and it is still professional, and I'm still professionally reaching out to not just my not just my Twitter followers but to everyone around Twitter. Okay, you, you gotta you gotta do this professionally, even if it's automated, all right. I do I actually I actually use later now if you want to um, if you want to check out later link in the description all right it's there there will come a time all right it has it has come it has come to me I've already experienced it this morning there will come a time that you will run out of ideas and no matter no matter what kind of distractions you uh, you you make for yourself no matter how much inspiration you um, you try to drive out of anything it's just not there so what do you do go make some money right go make some go make the real money and my way is of course I got two ways brand deals and affiliate links but I got too many affiliate links uh, that are just lying lying in my laptop right here that need to be promoted that really need to that really need to be promoted okay so henceforth the July Twitter campaign so yeah I'm gonna make some uh, I'm gonna make some real money and probably get some leads <clears throat> no I don't I don't want to say probably uh, I'm praying that I will that, that, that I will get leads out of that so yeah time to think of the business side of things right yeah, for for July and I'm also um, excited somewhat that Advocacy Friday 
is coming up, season 2. Season 2 will be all live. Okay. So, I gotta rest my brain a bit for that. That's why I'm going to promote affiliate links on Twitter this entire month of July. But, of course, I will, uh, I'm going to put out, I'm going to pull out diaries entries every now and then. And, of course, uh, I want to speak my mind out regarding, uh, regarding those uh, tweets I see on that day. But bottom line, right? Bottom line. Do not discount affiliate links. Affiliate links can be a lifesaver to a brand. Can be a lifesaver to your brand. Well, um, it's been a, it's been quite a while since I did another since my last stream. Now <clears throat> we're going to talk about. Uh, what I learned from, what I recently learned from the Secret to Success podcast by Eric Thomas, right, the hip hop preacher. <clears throat> now, one of his, uh, one of his associates there is the um, Jamal King, okay, the uh, the founder of the Make Real Estate Real course in in the U.S. Now, he always talked about that. Um, he always talked about in that particular episode that life isn't fair now well it's never actually fair right but here's what he here's what he suggested you have to make it fair for you for yourself okay now let me translate that to uh, to what I personally personally learned in money and life, it's never fair. Okay, but you have to do everything in your power to make it an advantage for you. Okay, you have to look for some sort of advantage. You don't have to actually. You don't have to actually win. Okay, you just create an advantage for yourself and for your loved ones. That's all. The, that's basically what he was saying in that podcast now it's very true right? it's really really true you don't actually have to win life all right you just have to create an advantage okay? look for an advantage and capitalize that's all there is to it in both money and life Let me repeat, in money and life, it's never fair. Now, we're going to, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, the lessons I've learned from, well, well, all you want, right? This can open a converse, this can open an entirely new conversation. Lessons from one of the greatest boxers of all time, Muhammad Ali. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a millennial watching, right? I'm sure there's a millennial watching right now and, and has no idea who Muhammad Ali was, okay? I was born in 1973 and because of, again, because of my father, I became conscious of the sport of boxing, okay? He's a boxing fan. And I also got to watch one of Ali's, uh, one of Ali's matches. It was the one against um, I forgot. I forgot who his opponent was. Um, let me refresh my memory. All right, give me give me a few seconds. I'm gonna remember that. Uh, against Larry Holmes. All right. He lost the world heavyweight title to that guy, Larry Holmes. That was 1980, 81. Okay. It's a long time, but during his heyday, he was the most feared boxer ever, right? Aside from one of the greatest, being one of the greatest trash talkers ever, yeah. You step inside the ring with him, he will knock you out, all right? He will knock you out. I've seen several of his footages before, okay? like um, 
was the thriller in Manila. Ali Frazier 2. Yeah. But anyway, if you would take into context all the trash talk that he has blurted out, there's a bit of meaning to that. All right? Let's start with the most famous one. Probably the most... Um, the most powerful affirmation ever invented in my from my point of view i am the greatest okay now the press has um excuse me the mainstream press has um misinterpreted him when he said that okay the press has probably maligned him for saying that now if you were to take it into context from a motivational standpoint to be exact it's a very powerful affirmation. I am the greatest. Okay. To say it out loud, to say it out loud, when not just only you're the one who's hearing it, but everyone else is hearing it, proves that it's a powerful, it proves that it's a certified affirmation. Every time he says that, he wins a world title. All right? He knocks opponents out in the ring. Every time he says, every time he says that, so it's not just uh, it's not just trash talk, all right? Okay, it's not just trash talk. It's a powerful affirmation. Try saying that to yourself out loud, and don't give a shit about what what other what others would think, because Muhammad Ali did not give a fuck what other people thought. When he when he always when he utters those words, he did not give a shit. All he cared about was winning a world title, right? And it's very effective, right? This is one of this is the biggest lesson I've learned from Muhammad Ali. Now, the other lesson is um, what you call this? The, that famous quote he had. I forgot. Well, he has a lot of famous quotes, but some of them, right? Some of them are motivational in nature. Okay, the most prominent one is, I am the greatest. Okay. Now, I might follow that up with another, with another entry. I'd like to make a separate entry on that because I want to focus on that particular quote. I forgot the exact words, right? I forgot the exact words. So, so for the sake of you guys, I'm going to... Uh, I promise, I'm going to make a separate entry on that, right? So, this is one lesson I learned from Muhammad Ali. Always tell yourself that you are the greatest. And you tend to live by that. You will live by that because you've already, you've already, make it, you've already made it known to others that you are the greatest. There's nothing wrong with that. It's an affirmation that needs to be followed up on. You follow up on that, even if you don't say, even if you don't say that often, as often as Muhammad Ali, you will be considered the greatest.